Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here we have 20 tips and tricks that you might not know about for Bellrine. Jumping right into it, at the first one here is going to be about food, which is super important in Bellrine. This will boost your health and also stamina and even other stats like productivity, increase to experience gain and also boost to combat stats. Always go with three different kinds of foods on you and you do have immersions just right next to Padstow here under the lake where you can teleport right next to it if you have placed a travel sign at it and here we can access three different kinds of foods. You first have Cloudberry for some extra stamina and a huge boost to experience gain, Fish Stew for both health and stamina and also productivity and some extra experience gain. And lastly we have the smoked fish for health, stamina and also reduce to speed to hunger. Pretty good combo overall and not too expensive as well. Combat can be quite hard at first in Bellrite, but once you get access to the bow it gets uh, quite a bit easier. The enemy NPCs can't reach you if you're jumping on some of the bigger rocks for example. Or you can also just kite them around these stone walls that's uh, around some of the roads here. And uh, this has been uh, quite a savior early on for me at least. In Bellrife there is uh, winter cycles and when those occur you will not be able to harvest plants like flax and hemp. Or gathering foods that grows in the woods like berries and mushrooms. When you start your playthrough you will have 5 days until the first winter occurs and uh, it can be a good idea to stock up on some extra flax before that hits you uh, because you will need it basically for everything at the beginning and if you don't have any when the first winter hits well then you're just really going to have some really boring days ahead of you. Try to build alongside roads if possible for easy teleportation with the travel sign and also put up a stockpile next to it can be really effective early on at least uh, when you might have to transfer items more for yourself. Managing your storage by setting up rules from the beginning will really help out making it so you won't run out of storage space. Uh, some things I have included in all of my stockpile is to put a max limit on the resources that come from farms for example, so you won't end up with thousands or flax or wheat. And same goes for the outpost by putting a max limit around half of the storage space uh, roughly for that resource that I'm farming at that outpost. Just to have some room for some other materials if I would need to have some. Also by having a well sorted storage can also be really helpful for crafting stations as well by having certain resources closest to those stations that need it to minimize the walking distance between them. Farms is something that you want to go for ASAP as soon as you can and just huge quality of life to have everything closer to your base as we get a lot of different resources that you need to progress your settlement with. Also food is uh, really easy to get from this as well and you can get uh, all the seeds here from different merchants around the map and just underneath Herndeen you can find one of them here and he basically sells you all the seeds that you will need to get started. Making bags for your NPC for even more inventory space, huge quality of life and a must have basically as it can carry more items which will lead to less moving around transferring items from point A to B. Armor will slow you down, getting lighter armor might be a better choice depending on what your playstyle is. For me I prefer the archer kind of combat and with that I also need to be able to kite enemies around and for that especially early on when you don't have any agility and therefore less movement speed this will be really helpful to have a lighter armor on you. And even when you are just exploring the map just remove everything so you can move around more faster. Once you get a bit into the game and start to get more NPCs, it's uh, very useful to start to block some of the different job priorities that are available. Don't feel afraid to put just one guy on uh, just cooking and another one on just deliveries for example and just blocking the rest. This can actually be quite effective instead not having all of them running around all of the time everywhere but actually having some of them uh, nearby certain jobs. And this will get more important to set up later on though uh, than it is when you're first starting out. 
You don't have to be at the research desk to start your research. If you press the N key to get the, the settlement page up and then you can go to buildings on your main village and change to only show research, you will get the research windows up and you can start the next one from here. And same goes for work orders as well. If you want to start anything, you can go to that workstation from this menu instead while you are out doing quests or farming for example. Setting up a outpost and delivery system is crucial for progression in the game. Very easy to set up and you don't need much to get started. You need a house, a stockpile and the working building of your choice. Basically like a mining camp if you're going for tin or copper for example. And then also a MPC of course. Tools and equipment in the delivery system have two of each and the first one that shows here is for new crafted items and the second one is going to be for broken items. And this is basically make it so you can set up a order to send broken tools from outpost to your main base for example so you don't have to have a full stockpile of broken tools on your outposts. In the building menu at the right corner you have the option to destroy buildings and also here you can also rename them. Simply press any of them and just stay close to the building and execute. When recruiting NPCs don't recruit the beggars. They bring down morale for the rest of your villagers and basically keeping them happy will boost their productivity and if they get uh, too low on the happiness they could even leave the settlement they are assigned to. Killing or damaging friendly animals like chicken, cows, pigs, goats or cats will make you lose reputation with different factions depending on the ones that's closest to you, so do try to avoid them. Strap is a material that is used a lot with crafting and also by researching early on. When you're starting out it can be quite rough to obtain it. You will get some from killing bandits but you can also buy it from different merchants around the map. And there are two spots I used it early on for. One is next to Padstow and the other one is between Herdin and Bradford at the Exile Craftsman's Hut. And both of these locations are right next to a road so you can simply just build yourself a travel sign next to it for easy access. When commanding your army you can make them go and make them grab food or refill like arrows or picking up a shield uh, by commanding them to a storage unit here uh, with the items in it. And you can also make them pick up loot after you have been in a fight. Simply use the same command, the E command to uh, target them on a corpse and they will loot all the loot in that corpse. Using the experience books all of the time as they do take some time to read before you receive the experience and these can be used on your NPCs as well by simply having them in your inventory and then when you talk to the NPC you want to apply it to you can go to their stats and you simply just press the plus sign to apply it same as you do for on yourself. The next one really quick tip but pressing down the H key will make you enable auto move. Huge quality of life if you missed it. For the next one is quite a hot topic, blocking off bridges with fences and this can be a useful way to defend yourself against enemy bridges. Not the most fun way to play the game maybe and some might even think this as a, a exploit but I mean it's a single player game so who even really cares about it. In my case I have the first four city liberated here and uh, the reclaim parties and all the other raids can be quite intense in some cases as you can send them out all at once. However, for this to work you will need to be at the barricades when the brigands are close to the bridges, otherwise they will just run right past it. Also some of the times when you are there they can get stuck and they will teleport through it either way, so do keep that in mind. And as of now there's four locations that they can go past. We have one down here, another one in the center of the map and then we have two bridges here at the swamp area. And for the last one, if you manage to kill the leader of the Bridgen headquarter, you will be granted with the Ashborn sword. And this is a 100% chance to drop, which is a quite strong one-handed weapon with a really long hit radius. And this guy, Lord Ashborn, will get respawned, so you can keep killing him and farming him for more swords. And you can equip this to all of your MCs to get a really strong army. But do keep in mind it is a 5 strength requirement for this weapon. So it's nothing that you can really use early on. 
If you got any other tips and tricks, feel free to share them in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!